G'day, I'm Paul. So the Land Rover Discovery, it was a big hit for Land Rover, but not everyone wants a monstrous SUV. And that's why they created this. It's the Discovery Sport. It's recently been facelifted and today we're going to check it out. This here competes with things like the BMW X3, the Mercedes-Benz GLC and the Audi Q5. This particular model here is the D200 R Dynamic SE specification and it's priced at a little over $75,000 but if that's too expensive the whole range kicks off at a little over 65 grand. Today we're going to do a detailed review of this car so if you do want to skip ahead to other parts of the review you can use time codes up on the screen there or if you're on YouTube just scroll down and use the chapters below and if you haven't done so already subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon so you can find out every single time we drive facelifted cars. So you've got 11 external colours to pick from. All but white is $1,400. I just don't understand why the colours are so expensive. But anyway, now before I get down to the front there, I love this. So you've got the VIN number behind the window there, but it also tells you the spec of the car and there's a QR code there as well. So kind of cool that they're, you know, adding design to the build plate, which or the VIN number plate, whatever it's called. Um, in terms of design down the front here, I love this black pack. So Discovery, all in black, you've got this piano black uh, grill section. And then as you work your way further down, you get more black intersplined with that blue color. I love this color as well. So Land Rover offers a really nice variety of colors. Not many manufacturers will do 11 colors to choose from, but the way they've done this and had it set up, I think it just really gives this car a bit of presence out on the road and makes it look a whole lot premium than its price tag suggests. Over here we have a full LED headlight set with LED daytime running lights. You can option matrix LED lights for the SE model, but standard is just an adaptive beam that moves with the steering wheel. You've got some faux vents down the side there. One is sort of real, but this one here is fake and so is this one here as well. We whip around to the side. Now down here we have a set of 20 inch alloy wheels. I like the wheel design, it's just pretty straightforward and simple. It's just got that sort of uh, silver finish to it. These are all season tires, which means they're not really built for off-road driving, but they can do a light bit of off-road driving. So if you're going to a campsite or something like that, Land Rover is synonymous with off-road and the Discovery Sport kind of carries that forward. You'll see when we go for a drive, it's got the terrain response system. And it means that you can do a bit of light off-road driving if you so desire. I like here that these wheel arch protectors aren't black cladding. In a lot of SUVs you see black cladding around here, but I think this works well with the body colour. Discovery on the side there. Up the top here you've got an indicator built into that wing mirror with piano black on the surrounds. Up the top we have a panoramic glass roof. And then come around to the back. LED lights, more of them around here. So full LED lighting here for that rear cluster black discovery badges there. Up the top here, you've got a shark fin aerial. You'll notice a camera in here. I'll show you that when we get inside the car. I like this as well. It kind of continues that theme I mentioned up the front there with the VIN number. It actually says antenna for these lines. So just gives you an idea that this is actually where the antenna for the digital AM and FM radio sits. More black cladding as you work your way down. Land Rover badge here that joins the badge on the side there as well. So I still think this is a pretty good looking car. Let me know what you reckon in the comments section below. Do you think they've done enough here with the facelift or should they have done more? I'm keen for your feedback. So we're inside the Discovery Sport. Let's start off with the key. Here it is. So you've got lock, unlock, light. So this turns on the ambient light when you're approaching the car. Boot and then panic. Then on the back there, you've got the Land Rover logo. It's a proximity sensing key, so you just leave that in your pocket. Once you're inside the car, you've got the push button start. Now, let's talk about the design. Um, look, I actually quite like this. It is very sort of, uh, I'm not going to say basic, but just different in a sense, because you've got this material here. It's quite rough, and it sort of feels a bit like the Defender, where they've gone for that sort of uh, utilitarian, a rugged sort of look. Up the top here, you've got quite a um, sort of robust surface as well. So it's rubber, but it looks like it's hard wearing. It can take a few knocks as well. I also like that they've broken up all of these colors with a little bit of piano black, but then it sort of gets piano black overload down the bottom here, but you've got these sort of brushed aluminum strips around the side. So uh, from a visual perspective, I think it looks nice and it matches the price tag. You don't feel bad about spending this kind of money and it feels a whole lot more premium than the previous generation or, or the pre-facelift of the Discovery Sport did. Now, in terms of the materials, so all of that stuff is, is really nice to the touch and then your touch points. 
Not too bad there in the centre and good on the door as well, but how firm are they? Well, we've got our durometer, we've tested the main surfaces in this cabin. If you want to see how this car compares to others that we've tested before, have a look at the link in the description. Uh, builds quality, so this all feels nice and solid. I did notice before though, on the way here, this is making a bit of noise when you lean onto it, but outside of that, it all feels pretty decent. Door test. Sounds really good, nice and solid. Let's talk infotainment. So this is probably the biggest change for me, being a bit of a, a tech nerd, but it's now picked up Pivi Pro, which is Land Rover's new infotainment system. We've seen it previously in vehicles like the Defender, the new F-Pace, and I'm a really big fan of it. So it is here as a 10 inch infotainment system. And I think it just really complements this dashboard nicely. It looks fantastic. The only thing is I've noticed that it's a little bit slow compared to the one we've experienced before in the Defender. So I don't know whether it gets a slower CPU or less memory or something like that, but it just doesn't feel quite as quick as the one in the Defender. So. Putting that to one side though, it comes loaded with technology. So you have an inbuilt SIM, you have inbuilt satellite navigation, all your Bluetooth stuff is fairly standard. In terms of radio, you have AM, FM, and DAB plus digital radio, and it's all plumbed through a six speaker sound system. In terms of smartphone mirroring, you have Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. This is what Apple CarPlay looks like, full screen integration, and this is nice and fast. Have a look at that, very impressive. Both Android Auto and Apple CarPlay are wired, so not a wireless setup. I'll show you what Android Auto looks like. So same story again there, full screen integration, nice and quick too. So win-win on that front. I thought I'd also point out some of the other cool features in here. Because this is kind of a four-wheel drive focused vehicle, you've got your four by four menu, and this is where you're going to be able to see things like your wade sensing. So as you do, um, you're sort of driving through water, you can see how it wades. You've got a 600 millimeter wading depth. And then you also have the four by four info menu that gives you an idea of um, pitch, roll, all that sort of stuff. So really impressive there. I love that they include this information. Um, and this is another interesting one as well, uh, vehicle dimensions. So not so much an issue right now because this isn't a massive car, but if you do fit extra things to it, it's good to know how much your uh, roof racks or your roof box is actually adding to the height of the car. You've also got your approach and departure angles here as well. So really like that setup. And the final thing I'll mention as well is this. I haven't seen this before in cars, an air quality sensor. So this actually tells you what the air quality is like outside and inside the car. So pretty awesome setup and good to see that this kind of stuff is available in the Discovery Sport. The screen ahead of the driver is a 12.3 inch display and this again is configurable and gives you all the information you need. A little bit tricky to use. Um, this is kind of a hangover from previous generations of this car and it's not quite as I guess new and flashy is something as the Defender. Well, I don't feel it is anyway, and I think this could do with a bit of an update to make it kind of a bit cooler like the Audi virtual cockpit setup is. And moving on to safety, you've got a full suite of safety tech, including an airbag kind of thing on the bonnet for pedestrian impact. So it allows that to pop open if you do hit a pedestrian. So. Um, I haven't seen that before in any other cars, but you also get autonomous emergency braking in forwards and reverse. You get an auto dimming rear vision mirror, but the cool thing is that camera that I talked about earlier, you can see it up there as you flick between it being on and off. You have a lane departure warning and a lane keeping assistant. Blind spot monitoring built into the wing mirror. You get rear cross traffic alert plus radar cruise control. You've got both front and rear parking sensors and a 360 camera. I'll show you what the camera looks like. So there it is there. Pretty impressive camera. And the reason I say that is you've got a stack of different options to choose from here in terms of angles. And I love that 3D effect. You can pull that around as well with your finger if you want to. I think it's just a really clever way to do that. But you also have an off-road menu here for the camera. So it shows you what the off-road systems are doing in terms of the drivetrain. Then you can also see the wheels and out the front there. So this is kind of a purpose-built car if you like going camping with the kids and stuff like that. So a really impressive setup there for the 360 camera. Moving on to practicality, we'll start with connectivity. So you have one USB-C port down the bottom here. If you open the glove box, you've got a 12 volt outlet, a USB-A port, and another USB-C port. In terms of storing your phone though, it can live down here on the wireless phone charger, or you can pop it in here. You've kind of got a slot to put it in as well. Keep in mind that this car has some options fitted to it. So some of the stuff that I speak about here may not be standard. So make sure you double check that before you commit to buy. 
bottle storage. We'll start off with our coffee cup. So it's a dual tiered setup here. So if you have a non-man sized coffee cup like I do, it will fit into this small one. You're able to retrieve it easily without spilling it. Then you have a bigger one here if you're into your American sized Starbucks gallons of coffee. Um, and then uh, the actual bottles, uh, same story. You can fit one in the smaller slot there or fit one in the bigger slot with ease. You've got rubber teeth there as well to hold it into place. This fits into the door easily as well. Let's try our Whopper bottle, see if that can actually get inside the door there. Oh, that's awesome, that actually fits in sideways. So you've got plenty of storage options there for your bottles. Further to that, you've got a decent sized center console because it goes all the way in, but then it tucks under this section as well. So you've got plenty of storage there. Glove box is reasonably sized too. And finally, you have a sunglasses holder up the top here. Now, what about your comfort options? Well, you've got dual zone automatic climate control. I love the way this works. So I'll pop that on now. You can see you've got your temperature there. You can adjust that as required. But if you want to adjust your fan speed, you hit this and then it transforms this into a manual fan speed controller. And then when you go out onto the road as well, you push this and then you can select your different drive modes as well. So really clever integration there. And I love when they get a little bit creative with that stuff. I think that's really cool. You can also get heated seats, but again, a lot of this stuff is optional. So uh, keep that in mind when you are specking the car. You're gonna have to tick some boxes. On the seat front, these are really comfy seats. You've got this sort of rib design on the bottom section, and then you've got these sections that hug you in nicely. I love the offset colors. It is just a very striking design. Both the driver and front passenger seat are electrically adjustable. So with the driver's seat, for example, you can go forwards, backwards. You can do the backrest forwards, backwards. You can go up and down, you can do your bolsters. It's a 12-way adjustment, so pretty awesome setup. And then you also have memory for the driver's seat as well. Steering wheel offers both tilt and reach adjustment. And on our reach test, all of this stuff is easy to reach while you're driving. Right, we're in the second row now. Let's talk about room first. So knee room, heaps of knee room. Toe room is reasonable. Headroom is really good. Have a look at that panoramic roof. That looks fantastic as well. Now, my seat is pretty far back and I have loads of room here. So it gives you a good idea that you don't really need to go up to the Discovery 5 to get all the space you need inside. This is really sort of ample room. In terms of the other elements, you've got that sort of same rib design on the back seats here with the offset colors. You've got air vents down the bottom here. You have a 12 volt outlet and a bit of storage beneath it, but no USB charging, which is really odd for a family vehicle. Uh, Matte pockets in the back of the seats. You've got a center armrest here with two cup holders and a little storage nook. Pop our bottle in there. No dramas and that also has rubber teeth. You can fit the bottle inside the door too which is pretty cool. On the door itself you've actually got the safe exit assistance so this will prevent you from opening the door if there's another vehicle or cyclist coming. So it's a really good feature especially if you have impatient kids. In terms of seat adjustments you can move the second row forwards and backwards to afford more room for the third row. You've got ISO fix points and top tether points as well if you need to have baby seats in here. Let's have a look at the third row though, because um, it doesn't look all that spacious back there. And I think it is just for kids, but I'm keen to see whether you can actually fit adults back there. But before we do that, we've got a new test that we're introducing. And that is, because you asked about it, does the window go all the way down? The answer is no. It's like just over halfway down, which I find really strange. Why can that not go down any further? So um, yeah, we'll be doing this on our future tests as well. Okay, so let's have a look at the third row. Now, Land Rover says this is just for kids, but I just want to see what it's like for adults because part of the appeal of owning this is you can be designated driver, take your drug mates home or something like that. So let's see how it goes. You get into the third row by pulling this all the way forward. Once you're in there, you can lift that third row just like this and then lift the headrest as well. Now getting in is a little bit of a challenge for adults because you kind of have to work your way into there. And I'm sorry, this is a disgusting sight for some of you. Um, then you can basically just pull this forwards and lock it into position. So I've got you know, room that I'm happy with here. So toe room is, is not great, but knee room is okay. Headroom is sort of not great, but look, ultimately, if I needed to sit here for a short trip, this actually wouldn't be the end of the world. I remember being a bit more cramped in the Land Cruiser and that's like 70 times the size of this, so it's not too bad. You've got two cup holders down the bottom here, but unfortunately, there's no USB charging here, which is a little bit disappointing, I reckon. Let's talk cargo space because often with these three row SUVs that aren't monstrous, there isn't a great deal of it. So power tailgate, crack that open. 
So you have a little over 150 litres here behind the third row. I don't know how they calculate that because to me, it doesn't seem like there's 150 litres there. But anyway, beneath this section, you've got access to your jack and a few other bits and pieces. And I'll show you what it looks like with my laptop bag there, just as reference. You can see that literally is the only thing that fits. But you then drop the third row out of the way by pulling that lever. That disappears. You've got then a little over 1,100 litres of cargo space there. Over off to the side here, you've got a 12 volt outlet. You've also got some netting and hooks. I'll show you what it looks like with the bags in there. So there's one bag, pop our next bag in. So it's not a bad boot space. There's a fair bit of room there. And if you do need a little bit more, and this will expand to just over 1,600 litres, you've got a couple of little seat droppers off to the side here and that gives you your 1,600-ish litres of space. So we've hit the road in the Discovery Sport. Now you do have a few engines to pick from, but what we're driving here is the D200, which is the diesel. And I'll tell you what, Land Rover has done a really good job in terms of making these diesels far more, I don't know, I guess, family friendly in the sense that they're not clattery, they don't sound like an old truck. And this one here is a two litre four cylinder turbocharged diesel, makes 150 kilowatts of power and 430 newton metres of torque. And it's about right for a car that weighs around that two tonne mark. So it's not too little and it's not too much. It really just sort of suits the character of the car. And it's all mated to a nine speed automatic transmission and a mild hybrid system as well. And that means when you come to a stop, so I'm gonna just roll down to a stop here. You'll see as the speed gets lower, it doesn't actually wait. So it's off right now and we were still sort of crawling along. It has an integrated starter generator and that means when I roll out of the brake you can barely feel it switching on and for a diesel that's really impressive and it means that you are able to slow down, come to a stop, roll out of the brake and then it takes off nice and smoothly. Now in terms of the feel behind the wheels, so let's give it a little kick here. Yeah look it's not going to pull the skin off your face but uh, and also the gearbox isn't massively quick as well but for the most part, you can actually just lean on the throttle to rely on that torque band. So you get the turbocharger come in and it really just sort of sings along nicely. So look, it's it's not going to set any world records, but I don't think you need a car like this to be overly quick. It just feels nice and placid and um, I guess confidence inspiring behind the wheel. One thing I did notice is how direct this steering is. My goodness, there's just a tiny input required and it really just darts through corners. So it's not a bad thing, it's just um, yeah, something I've noticed that I thought is worth calling out. Let's talk fuel economy. So Land Rover claims a combined average of 5.7 litres per 100 kilometres. We are currently sitting on 8.5. So it is higher than that figure. This car's been doing a lot of city driving and we have been doing a bit of driving here around the Proving Ground. So it is sitting a little bit higher, but still pretty commendable when you consider how big this is and the fact that you're probably going to be doing a whole lot of city driving anyway. In terms of zero to 100, Land Rover says it'll take around 8.9 seconds. We've put it up against our stopwatch and this is how it went. In terms of visibility, uh, the driving position is actually really good. So I can see clearly down the front there. The wing mirrors could be a little bit bigger. They're kind of small, but you can get sort of decent vision down the side of the car. And you've got a blind spot monitor built into those. Visibility out the back is reasonable as well. It will be a little more reduced if you do have the third row up, but uh, the, the sort of envelope there is big enough to see out of. Now, in terms of drive modes, we do have some four wheel drive modes. I'll run you through those in a second, but we don't have any on road drive modes aside from this sport mode. So I'll pop that into sport. I've got a couple of corners coming up. Let's just see what it's like through here. Yeah, look, it's, it's got a fair bit of body roll, but it's nothing out of control. It's not sort of making me feel uncomfortable behind the wheel. Uh, and then as we lean into this slightly faster corner, everything's just nice and predictable. I know exactly what the car's going to do and it doesn't feel like it's, it's sort of got too much body roll that it's out of control. It's just nice and progressive in the way that it drives. And that direct steering also 
I mean, it gives it a bit of a sporty vibe behind the wheel as well. So, look, it isn't going to set the world on fire in terms of handling, but I don't think it really needs to. It, it just sort of gives you that confidence-inspiring, comfortable feel behind the wheel. The all-wheel drive system is always shuffling torque around the car, so it's not one of those ones that's predominantly front-wheel drive and then becomes all-wheel drive. It's like a really nice balance, and even as the speed picks up here, it actually feels really nice and decent. It's, um, yeah, like I said, a lot of body roll, but it's not out of control. And it's, I guess it's what you would expect for a car like this. Look at our tram tracks coming up here. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Let's talk road noise. So there is a little bit of wind noise coming into the cabin, but the weather's sort of turning a bit ugly there. So I was kind of expecting that. Road noise is good. Like there is a little bit of tire noise coming into the cabin, but for the most part, it's pretty quiet. The diesel engine is remarkably quiet, so you're never really going to hear that. So I'm really impressed with that. Now let's dial up the speed a little bit here. So I like to just bring this up to the maximum highway speed in Australia. See what it's like on our undulations. Okay, so we're rolling into them now. And this is really just a test of what the car's like on a country road. We have had some of the cheaper cars bottom out here and just behave poorly, but this is really nice and controlled. This, the ride is just very smooth and gentle. It's not overly firm. And you can imagine when you do load this up with passengers, you want just a really, um, I guess, a soft feeling behind the wheel. You don't need it to be firm. And this really just sits in that sort of nice middle ground. So I mentioned earlier that you don't have any on-road drive modes. You can get adaptive dynamics and adaptive damping and all, all these sort of additional uh, modes that you can use on-road, but this car is just sort of standard in terms of its offering. You do hit this button though, and it brings up all the train response modes, so you can go into a variety of those for off-road driving. You've also got hill descent control and a speed control for off-road driving, and you can use that for sand driving or driving through mud where you want the car to maintain a set speed and manage its traction itself. It means, I guess, all the work is done. And that means that this car is a really good alternative to those ute-based SUVs, especially if you're doing just a bit of light off-road driving. And if you do any of that sort of light off-roading stuff, you have a ground clearance of 212 millimeters. It's not the most in the world, but it's actually pretty reasonable compared to some of the peers in this segment. And if you do any towing as well, you have a brake towing capacity of just over 2,000 kilos. So the Discovery Sport, I think this latest update really just brings all the technology into line. It is a little bit disappointing that Pivi Pro feels slower for some reason than other Land Rover products, but if you put that to one side, the rest of the package is actually really good. You've got a usable third row for kids and adults at a stretch, an efficient diesel engine, and I don't know, a price that isn't astronomically expensive compared to the peers, which a lot of just don't offer seven seats anyway. So it sits within this really nice niche. And I think it's a car that, I don't know, I would consider buying if I had a small family and I wanted to do long distance driving with a little bit of off-road thrown in as well. Now, let me know in the comments section below, have you bought one of these? What's it like to live with? What's it like longer term? And how expensive is it to run? I'm always curious about that with Land Rover products. So let me know your thoughts down there. If you did enjoy this video, please share it with your mates, hit the like button. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe to our channel and press the bell icon so you can find out every single time I brave the elements, the wind and the rain to give you new car reviews. But until next time, take it easy.